The cores of these ancient stars are comprised of iron nickel composite. We have these iron and nickel composites raining down onto us. We call them meteorites. And, you know, it can be found there are people that collect these meteorites and they sell for a whole lot of money. But what they're actually picking up are the smashed up remains of ancient stars that are older than the Earth, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and the Moon combined. Over time, traveling through the galaxy, the surface, or the mantle, of the star and the lithosphere get ripped away by collision events and the core stays put. But over time, these events keep on smashing and ripping away the mantle and lithosphere until it leaves a thin little uh, mantle and it starts to expose the core structure. And then if there's another collision, this core structure will get ripped off, ripped away, and it will send out iron uh, and nickel meteorites. And we know what these look like. Here's a cross-sectional area that was etched with acid of one of the meteorites. As you can see, there's oxide buildup called rust. But if you slice it and etch it, it'll expose these Thompson structures which are these crystalline patterns of crisscrossing iron and nickel. Now the composition of the meteorite is determined by or what you call it, either it's chemasite or taenite is depending on how much iron and nickel there is inside the composite. This is the piece of a core of an ancient star very very old dead star that's been smashed up and was just wandering the galaxy. Here we have a simple graph. Chemasite is mostly iron. Tainite is the nickel. Chemasite and tainite is the iron nickel composite. As you move up the, co the composition of the nickel is higher and lower is the composition of iron is higher. But these two uh, types of minerals are the interiors of ancient stars. Here's another picture of a piece of a stellar core. Notice the crisscrossing patterns. And keep in mind this crystal growth happens over many billions of years. It's not something that we can reproduce in a lab. So there you have it. This is the first, this is the very beginning of a star's core formation. You're, you're looking at a slice of the very beginning of a star forming its core. I think it's a peridot crystal right there. Uh, I don't know, I'm not too sure, but as you move outwards from the core, more peridot will be apparent and more other or more crystals that have more magnesium in it will appear, magnesium and sulfur and things like that. So to recap, we can tell if the falling star, if you will, was a part of the core of the ancient star or it was a part of the mantle or the lithosphere. If it has a lot of carbon composites and a lot of organic type material, chances are when the impact happened, which sprayed the material outwards into interstellar space, it was a part of the lithosphere. But if it's mostly iron and nickel, it was the core of the ancient dead star. It wasn't in the surface. But this is for my readers to understand and to study. It's very simple to understand. It can be taught to a kindergartner. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure a lot of kindergartners are going to be learning about this in the future. Alright, 